So welcome, Jaquel. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Uh, so um, I wanted to talk about urban fiction first. Mm -hmm. um, urban fiction is such a controversial genre. There are readers that feel like this genre holds back author's success. How are you able to push your pen being a best-selling author and proving them wrong? Well, it is very controversial and I feel like it doesn't get the love that it deserves. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of readers that started reading, started reading urban fiction and then somewhere along the line, they felt like, oh, it's not good enough because they don't see it being represented represented often like you don't see it mostly when you cruise in the aisles of target or in bars and noble like mm -hmm. it's very hard to find but i just stay in my lane i always try to push something different keeping it urban fiction by also also making it different than the typical urban fiction because you can have urban fiction without a drug dealer. You can have urban fiction without the guns and the violence and stuff like that. So I'm just always trying to be different. Like my confessions of a hustler's housekeeper, he wasn't in the streets. He used to be, but he wasn't in the streets. He was mm -hmm. a single dad. Well, he was engaged, but that's a whole nother story. But he was a single <laughs> dad trying to make it work or whatever, but it was still urban fiction. So I just feel like, just continue, I feel like we need to, as urban fiction authors, to continue to keep pushing the envelope and keep doing different things and proving that we deserve to be in the same spaces that they're in. Absolutely. And also, urban fiction, you can show a change. Like, they can start in the streets, and then by the end of the book, right. you know, they changed it to, you know, better people. And I think sometimes people look into urban fiction as this it's, it's one box and it's like you said you can go different ways with urban fiction it's it's not just you know a set in stone type of thing um also well when i was introduced to you it was a little before the pandemic but during the pandemic readers could count on you to release books and keep us entertained um and you also gave us a bonus by art offering a treat yourself um, book boxes. You had the mini boxes that I bought and you had the big boxes. The mini box boxes just came with like a t-shirt and a book and then the mm -hmm. book boxes had the trinkets in it and the 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 books. Um, how much of a blueprint do you think that's set for indie authors during that time? Um, I feel like it, it's set. I don't try to be the blueprint. I just do me. And if others follow behind, great. I feel like there's enough space in our industry for everybody to do their own thing. Mm -hmm. But I definitely see more, you know, authors doing book boxes, which I love and, you know, offering that for their readers because readers really do love it. Yes. So I, you know, I don't try to be the blueprint. I just do job. <laughs> and if anybody follows or is inspired by it, then I like it. I want to be inspiration to people. I want people to, you know, feel like they can do more than just, you know, writing books and putting them on Amazon. Like you can have a, you know, a subscription box based business and stuff like that. Yeah. Cause you did, you also did purses. Right. Other, yeah. So you venture out beyond the books, but most of your fans were introduced to different sides. You had the author and you had the business woman. Right. Side. And you kind of combine both, which, you know, I, I like that because it's like, you know, sometimes I want to buy a purse, but I want that black owned business right. support. And you gave us like those avenues to where, you know, I'm, I'm an author, but I also I'm into different things. So, you right. know, the extensive part of me that I want to introduce you guys to. Right. Um, also, one of the boxes you, um, you offer was the free Bianca box mm -hmm. where you um, gave actually showcased Bianca um, provided a book for her and the, you know, the little t-shirt right. free Bianca. How important was that to you? Because I know you guys were really close and you just wanted the readers to not lose touch with her right um, through you. That was very important because that's Bianca's my girl. So I felt like, and what was happening to her wasn't right. And I just wanted to do something so people didn't forget about her. Like, she was still there. She's still writing. She still had books. And she was mm -hmm. going to come back. 
it was a, a long journey for her and that's her, her story to speak on. But on my end, I just wanted people to know, like, free her. Like, what's happening to her is not okay. And it could happen to any one of us that was signed to a publisher, you know? And I think Bianca was really, like, the lesson for us to show how she went through that experience, but she went through with her, her head held high. She didn't take the low, the, the low road. And now look at her. I'm yeah. proud of her. Love you, B. I just saw her um, at, at a at a book uh, book event last year. She's doing couple. her thing, and I'm so happy that she's out of that situation and she's able to get back to releasing her work and doing her own thing. Absolutely, and they're talking about her new work too. It's you know she came back swinging. Bianca really is a, like she's a beast. Like her her work. Listen. Yeah. Yes. Um, I know this may be, you know, I have a favorite series by you. And I'm going to be biased because I, this was my introduction to you, the Staten mm -hmm. um, Island Love Letter. That was my introduction to you. And then I went back and read everything that you wrote before that. And then, you know, I continued. Uh, then I went back, you know, forward. But I think me personally, that's my favorite writing by you. I just, it was so detailed. It was, um, I'm not going to say different, but it, it was, it was a series that I, something like I never read before, you know, you had the three brothers and you had the three sisters and everybody had their own problems. It's like, nobody was innocent. Right. I like that. I like that you didn't make, one character less flawed than the other. You had the, you know, it may not have been as big, but it, all of them had flaws. And is that your favorite series? What is your favorite series? I'm going to always say that now in Love Letter for the fact of it's my hometown. And yes. it was the first book and living, it was the first book writing about my hometown and living in New York. You just know that Staten Island is that borough. It, we were called the Forgotten Borough because they never like to include us in nothing. Mm -hmm. We're like on an island on our own. So I, it was important for me to release a book, but also put my hometown in it. So it's always going to be my favorite series because it was just like writing about home was so nostalgic and being able to shed light on certain, you know, parts of Staten Island. Like even some of my readers that are from Staten Island or Ben were able to recognize, like, I've been over there. I know that part. Yes. I know that street. <laughs> so that one's going to always be my favorite series. Oh my God. I, and I, you know, I promise it's like, as you were releasing, I'm like, oh my God. It's like, it was crack. <laughs> like we couldn't <laughs> wait. We were waiting. Like we were my friends. We we're like, she dropping tomorrow. <laughs> she dropping tomorrow. <laughs> that series was so good. And I still to this day recommend it um, when I'm recommending reads because Thank you. again, it was unlike any other I had ever read. And then the way that you, you dotted your eyes across your teeth. It's like you you connected everything. Yeah. Um, towards the end, you 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 talked about you know sickness. Um, Ghost was you know ended up being sick and how he fought through it and um, basically women sometimes and, and we have you know freedom. She was faced with a choice. It was like. I don't want to end up in jail. I don't want to be that ride or die. I want right. to, that, you know, I want to live and be on my own and without having to worry about the police pulling me over or me having to do serious right. time. Because I mean, listen, I'm not, I'm not. Go I tell my husband all the time, I'm not built for jail. I'm not going. <laughs> <laughs> I am not going. So it's just, I just wanted to share, like, because a lot of the books, especially in urban fiction, you know, you have that, you know, that ride or die character. And I have plenty of them that's willing mm -hmm. to go down and be what they meant, because that's what makes urban fiction. We love that. But also, there's another side, like, I'm not trying to go to jail. I'm not going to jail. I want to, <laughs> like, I want to live regular. I'm not trying to get pulled up on in Target because you got beef in the street. <laughs> so that was I, I wanted to really showcase that in the book because we all we always get the ride or dies and the ones that you know gonna yes. hold down. But I wanted to show like free wasn't like no no sir I got kids I got kids. 
And she did have, you know, have a few surprises for him when she got back. <laughs> <laughs> she really did. I, I want to talk about that. Like, I I forgave her, but I was so mad at Freedom for hiding those kids. Right. That was and I think and that was mo yeah. I did that mostly to show because even though she got away and she made something to herself, she still had flaws and she had secrets that she was hiding. Mm -hmm. She had skeletons in her closet. So her situation was no better than her sister's situation. Yes. So, you know, she was on the right path doing her thing. So I just wanted it to be, and, and even with him having his situation with he has ki kids now, he's in a whole relationship. I wanted to, her to be not perfect like this girl just bl blowing back in town and you know she's this interior decorator she's doing her thing but no you got secrets you've been hiding your kids you know kept these kids from they they, they daddy mm -hmm. so you know it was important for me to give her something that she wasn't perfect and, and ghost wife i can't think of her name Oh my God! I think, Girl, don't get me lying. I don't even remember her name. I think I think by the well, her her demise was well deserved, but it's it, and it got it. It really had me like no matter how big of a person you are and how big your 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 demeanor is and your spirit is, you it's always somebody who wants your spot, and it's mm -hmm. always. Yeah, and usually we we hear people with that say when you're so big and powerful, your downfall will always be the person you love the most. Yep. And to know what she was doing or she was how 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 she was capable of hurting him. Right. That that was man, that I that was that was a great scene. It's like every time <laughs> every time we, we we get here, you take us somewhere else and it was Man, that 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 I, I'm going to actually go back and read it again because now, now. <laughs> no. So, with that being said, with all your books, who do you think is your most underrated character? Hmm. This is a hard one because there's a few. I'm gonna go with um, Kenny and all the dope boys going to feel her. I don't think a lot of people talk about her or that book or that series mm -hmm. because it wasn't one of my popular ones. It's a little sad. So I think she was, you know, she's underrated because nobody really speaks about her, how she went from a teenager into an adult and went was thrown in all these different situations where, you know, she didn't have, you know, the tools equipped to deal with them with messing with, these older guys who yes. make her know well, mm -hmm. no good, and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go with Kenny. Who you? Who do you? Which one will you give the belt to? Because I I want to say Messiah. <laughs> 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 who would you give the heavyweight belt to? Like is your the character where it's like, and the reason I, I say Messiah, and I'm gonna let you answer that is because. You don't really read about the women calling the shots, the women being feared, the women, you know, uh, just being someone who, you know, rules with an iron fist because she didn't play any games. I'm going to I'm going to have to agree, Messiah. I don't think there's been another character that I have written, especially one that is like the head of anything that has that power that messiah has Ooh. and she's just like this like she calls the shots she's not she's eerily quiet like it's just like she's she's she has to hold the title she fearless yes she she she's the way she rules is fearless like oh my god i love messiah are you doing any book events this year i am i'm doing a a book event, I think it's called LCA in North Carolina in August. And then okay. I'm doing um, another event with Aisha Bree and Kimberly Brown. And it's in South Carolina. And that's in October. Okay. Okay. I know that one. Um, 
which your books, which one was the most fun to write where? Because I, I, I want to talk about, we're going to get into your new series, Brookwood. Welcome to Brookwood, the Brookwood mm-hmm. series. You kind of, and we're going to get into that a little, but I think the comedy was there to me. Mm-hmm. I, I, I felt the, the, the fun side of a Jack Hale. Like, I, I liked it, you know, yeah. that that part of you. Um, is there a genre you want to write in and you're you're tiptoeing towards it, but you want to get a feel of how your fans will accept it? I want to do um, Paranormal. I actually posted oh. a Paranormal um, cover like a few years ago and I was going to do it. I had wrote a few chapters and then I kind of chickened out because I know that the people that love paranormal, they, they don't play like they, they you got to come correct. <laughs> so I was just like, you know what, I'm going to, you know, step out a little bit, but I do this year or maybe next year. I want to test my hand at writing an urban paranormal oh. novel and see where it goes, cover my eyes and post it. <laughs> that's one. I'm nervous about stepping into any genre, but that genre, I just, I know that, you know, people don't play about that genre. Mm-hmm. They, they want it to be right. And, it, and it's so much, and I respect the authors that do write in it because there's it's so much more than, you know, creating these worlds with werewolves and um, all the vampires and stuff like that. Because it's you have to know so much of the lingo and you know the vocabulary and all of that. So it's something that I want to tap into, but I also want to do my research so that when I do do it, I do it justice. I got it. I got it. Is there? And I, I know we spoke about it early with earlier with Bianca, but is there any advice you would give to a new author that you didn't receive and you wish you had known when you first got into the industry? Um, I would say to, you know, keep your head down, stay in your lane. I'm I'm always going to preach stay in your lane because I think as new authors, a lot of times, a lot of new authors come in the industry and they, you know, think they have to do what they see a seasoned author doing, or they have to do this and they, they don't stay in their lane. They don't build their lane. I should say that, you know, build your lane, be who, what, what is going to make you stand out from all the different authors. Cause if you go on Facebook or you go on Amazon, there's thousands of authors and they're right in the same genre. So what is, what are you going to bring to, you know, carve out your lane in this industry that is full? Mm-hmm. Um, be careful who, you know, you trust and, you know, get a good team of people around you. That's going to hold you accountable. That's going to support you, you know, build your readers your readers, your readers are your, your day one. They're going to ride with you and you got to ride for them too. So, you know, focus on those things. I wouldn't focus on, you know, the drama because we know in the industry, there can be drama. Oh, Keep your head down. Don't even comment. Just go, just breeze on by it. Don't even pay any attention and just do you support others as you want to be supported. And, you know, that's it. And also, you know, read your contracts. I hear a lot that, of people. that, yeah. Especially if you read are <clears throat> signing to somebody, read your contracts. That is a lesson because you know sometimes you are excited to get signed, and you're so excited that you don't take the time to read over everything. And then, you know, as an author, you grow. And I know that's what happened with me when I was signed to a publisher. I grow. So the same things that excited me in the beginning when I did sign my contract were things that no longer serve me anymore. So you want to make sure you sign a contract where you have room to grow, where you're not stuck in a, you know, a contract where your publisher only wants you to write this. They don't yeah. want you to experiment right. other, you know, genres and they only want you to write this kind of formula. So definitely make sure you sign and you read your contract and you're on the same page with your publisher that you, you know, you want to branch out in different genres and they're going to be in support. I want to ask you a question, your covers. I, I really like your covers. They, they're simple, you know, not really too much going on. Do you pick your covers or, you know, yeah. you design? I, I use Aisha Bree. She's so dope. I get my covers from her. Um, I use Brittany Williams. Um, 
it's another one that I use. Hold on, let me just look real quick because I want to make sure I shout her out. Kay Nicole. I get my cover from her, Kay Nicole. And I use and I make my covers too. I make some of them myself. I've been, you know, playing around with that. But I I like to uh, I like to um stick to being simple nowadays. When yeah. I first if you go back and look at my other books in my catalog, like I had everything up on those covers, <laughs> but now I like to like, you know, keep it simple, straight to the point mm -hmm. and clean, yeah. a more yeah. clean, a more cleaner. Okay. Um, which are your new writing that you had, you just released. Um, I see that you, you basically want to, you, you're on contemporary romance now. I think you did a good job too. Thank you. Better. Were you scared? Cause you know, urban fiction fans, they really be they, on they your want, neck. I want to read about my drug dealers. I remember Val told me she was like, I want to read about my drug dealers, my killers, you know, my my car thieves. There's certain authors I want to read. Right. I don't want to be lovey dovey, you know, all the time. And you're one of them people you when you you have your urban fiction crowd and you deliver what were you just like let me try this or were you you know feeling some kind of way and you wanted us to let you know how you felt i wanted i had actually wrote a contemporary romance in 2018 called emotionalist and i had released it but then i got scared so i went back to what i was used to and i'm like okay let me stick to urban and I get asked almost on a daily, hey, when's that next second book going to come out? When? And even though it's a standalone, it's Sisters, so they um, wanted the, the second Sisters book. That's and true. I was so nervous releasing it. I was I was just like, you know, I'm going to release it, see what it does. And it, it did really well, And but I was scared. I wasn't ready. So I kind of like backed up from it and was like, you know what? Let me stick to the rivers and lakes that I'm used to. Let me just <laughs> stay up in this urban fiction but um, with the Linux Hill series, I felt compelled to write something different because I had just finished another urban series and I just wanted something different. I wanted to try it. And once I started writing it, I just couldn't stop. I was just like, let me just, you know, breeze through this. And it, it didn't do, it did well, but it wasn't like on the success of like my urban fiction books, which is just yeah. to be expected because it's a new genre. And, you know, a lot of my readers was kind of like, um, girl, <laughs> so he's going to be a drug dealer in chapter six, but, <laughs> <laughs> but they, I, I love them so much. Cause they was like, you know what we, this, 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 this different, but we going to rock with you. And, you know, mm -hmm. They supported the whole series and they loved at the end of the day, they loved the series. Once the one I the last one I just released was the ending to it. So, you know, I appreciate them for supporting me and you know hanging with me while I'm I'm tra transitioning. Like I'm transitioning, but I'm not, I just want to try different things. Like I don't want to put myself in a box of only doing urban. So I have urban releases coming still, but and that, that's the thing. I think we're so anal because it's like you said, the fans are like, is he going? Because, you know, we be wanting that. We, right. We, we want that that corporate guy that, that sells drugs on the side. like, Right. <laughs> and I'm fine myself because I'm so used to writing that. So I have, I realize I have to switch the lingo because these, these guys, yes. they're not in the street. So I find myself like, hey, um, no, he can't say that. Let me fix this up. He ain't doing this. So, you know, I tried to make my contemporary contemporary romance books not um, so romancy where the guy, you can't relate with him because at the end of the day, he's still going to be a black man. So he's going to talk how he talk, whether he's in a suit or he in a do-rag and Tim. So, you know, I try to keep my guys along the same line that they do have some kind of, you know, a little bit hood up in them. But, you know, they were, they were like, this is different. And I was like, yes. Oh. So with Welcome to Brentwood, um, you had, what well, my favorite story was actually about Laura and Kaysen. Mm -hmm. I, and and I think I, I know why it's, um, you, you had, Laura at first, she got on, on my nerves because 
you're failing and I, I don't mean that in a hard way but you know she was Taurus she was going and she didn't want any help she wanted to do it on her own and I think Casey and being introduced to, well not being well being reintroduced to her he kind of told her you cannot do this by yourself right you, it's okay to ask for help and at first she was just so stubborn to me that where I was rolling my eyes reading it like, <laughs> girl, if you don't ask for, you can't, you can't do this on your own. Right. But I think I like their love story because there's so many women where you don't want somebody to throw in your face that they uh -huh. are the reason you are successful. And I, I kind of understood that it's like, you know, she took her own money. She took her own recipes. She took everything on her own. And I remember her sister was like, call dad. And she was like, I, nope, I'm not calling dad. Nope, I know he can help pay. She didn't even much have money to purchase the ingredients My. for the cupcakes. And, it, you know, it's like it, you're, you're on that slippery slope. It's like, do I ask for help? and then pay them back with interest so they cannot throw it in my face? Or do I continue to, to drown and hope, you know, hopefully I, I catch my stride. And I, I'm so glad she let him, even though she told him no, I'm so glad Kaysen was able to help her, you right. know? Um, and I did like the career choices that you had. You know, he was a traveling food blogger. That is... So, we need that in our community because right. we don't have the same taste buds as everybody. Exactly. You already know that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, where you have the Keith Lees and people like that, it's like we trust his opinion because he has our taste bud. He likes right. it. And he, and he know it. how we eat. Yes. So, Kaysen being that travel blogger, um, blogger um, it's like people trusted him and then you saw they were saying, well, I came from here. I came from there because we trust you. One of the things, one of the young ladies was like, we trust him. He's one of us. He he doesn't um, act shy around us. He doesn't hide from us. And he, you know, we he eats like us. Right. And that was appreciated. So I really like their story. But I want to um, talk about beyond the, the relationship, all the relationships, because what I did like is that you focused on several different relationships, even though Laura and Kaysen were the main two of mm -hmm. uh, the friendship that was dwindling. And it, I remember Laura had um, said, I missed all the red flags in my, you know, friendship with Sammy. She was selfish, self-centered, mm -hmm. everything, e even when it wasn't about her, she made it about her. Yep. And, and one of the things that really bothered me was that Sammy knew Laura could cook. I mean, bake. Right. And you are throwing a wedding. You're marrying the mayor's son. And you don't use your best friend, your maid of honor. Right. To bake your cake. And I that bothered me because I'm like, that really would have put her on with the city. You have all these dignitaries. And important people there you don't put on your best friend is that really your best friend exactly and i think a lot of us as women we've been in real friendships where we didn't you know i know i've been in friendships where i didn't see it because when you win it you don't see it you know what i mean no. you, you, you don't see that this person is self-centered because in your head oh that's just how such and such is you know that's yes. how it is or whatever but i wanted to showcase that because sammy was she was selfish and you know laura was so busy you know trailing behind trying to keep up trying to pay for all these wedding festivities meanwhile she was drowning mm -hmm. and her friend had the life jacket you know to help her like hey let me put you on and I think as women, we we stay in these friendships because we may have known this person for years and years and we've become used to it. And we tell ourselves, you know, that's just how they are. Yes. But it's not okay because if a friend's not supporting you and they're not being there for you and you're you're the one that's always there, you're pouring into their cup and they never pour into yours, that ain't no friendship. Absolutely. And, and a, another thing that I, you know, with Sammy, really pissed me off. It's like, 
Yeah, you're planning a wedding. I understand, Brazilla, but you never checked on <clears throat> on Laura. You never you you see that she's not attending things, and and the comment she made was, "I just felt you were jealous of my wedding." Right. And it's the furthest thing from the truth. It's like, why would your best friend be jealous of your wedding? Exactly. Oh, that really pissed me off. She because was just that's so your friend. You know your friend. Uh, you know your friend wouldn't feel like that. Your friend wouldn't be jealous. And that was far for who Laura was. And I think she wanted her to be jealous. Mm -hmm. uh, that that was the the thing she wanted her to be jealous. But and then it's like um you when she realized the the bakery was going viral because of the actions of Casey. Then she, you know, she wanted her to come oh, around and let's do this. And a week you know, before the wedding, you right to have a. And I was so glad that Laura stood up to to her like, listen, it's a week before the wedding. There's no way I can fulfill an order like that and continue to run my business. Like I, I cannot drop everything. Had you gave give given me notice, this could have worked. But you're only trying to 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 basically ride the wave since you see what it's doing. And that really, oh my God. I think I wanted to jump through this book on stage. <laughs> and you know how they say hurt people, hurt people. Mm -hmm. It was like, you you know, you find out as you're reading that she's not really happy in her, you know, nope. with what she's doing. But, you know, they have a blooper. They have to cover up. And unfortunately, the, the only thing was getting married that's you know how yep. how they saw it um and it's like while you know everybody around her and i, I know she said everybody around her was getting married and things like that and you realize like maybe me not getting married is for the best because i think you showcase that people were getting married or being together for the wrong reasons mm -hmm. with with bryson and with sammy you know they're they're getting married to cover up a baby right and meanwhile they hate each other mm -hmm. they're not they're not on the same page you know and and he's not sammy he you know vented to to a couple of his fellas he's not happy and i think that right there it says a lot because the men are usually quiet. So when they get open up and say, mm, when they start talking, happy, you know, Ooh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, um, I, you know, I, I love that one. And then the story with Madison and Parker, that was so, that one was the, what I would call the cute story. It's like, you know, um, they, it was a child involved with, mm -hmm. Angel, um, Madison was his teacher. And no lie, when I read it, you gonna laugh. Why well, with the red lost? It's a red lost not too far <laughs> from my job. I promise you. I'm like, as I'm reading it, I'm like, I'm craving some red lobster biscuits. And when I wrote it, I remember when I wrote it, because I was <laughs> craving the same. I was like, I can go for some red lobster right now. <laughs> <laughs> I never read a, a story. You know, you usually go to the eye. When you put Red Lobster and it was the fact that Erica was ranking, she was like, is this the only restaurant? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that joke was so funny. So when, um, as I'm reading it, Angel was like, I want Red Lobster. I'm like, you know what? Let me go get these biscuits because it's, <laughs> it's calling me. I went and got, and it's crazy, secret. So I ordered the half a dozen, and the lady, because I gave her a tip, she snuck an extra, like, four in that food. <laughs> so I'm, like, literally at work, I had ordered the popcorn shrimp. I'm literally at work, like, eating off these biscuits, and they were like, well, how many do you? <laughs> <laughs> it don't matter. I need them all. <laughs> I'm like, listen, Angel them got me wanting this red lobster. Like, I promise you it came out of nowhere and i'm like it's this book and God, i don't even red eat red lobster like that i'm like i yeah. know very rarely but that i remember when i was writing i was like i can go for some red lobster. anytime you read a book and i mention <laughs> a specific place just know that i wanted it in that moment that's why it was written in the book <laughs> oh my god but yes madison you know um she was engaged 
and her fiance broke off the wedding like a week before. I, yeah, my heart was bleeding for her. I can't yeah. imagine. And he gave her, and that was another thing. He didn't give her a reason. Right. And she I never got her closure. I think as women, we want to know, like, why? And, uh, you know, and I we felt, start to get in our own head, like, what did I do? Yes. You know, what could I have not, done no, different? It's not, it's not us. It's, you know, it's them. But, you know, in the back of your mind, you're like, what could I have done better? And then, right. she, you know, she meets Parker, who is her student's father. Um, They actually met for the first time at Red Lobster before a parent-teacher conference. And it's crazy because I remember when um, Parker had told his ex-wife, Luna, about it. She's like, oh, no, you have to break up with her. I'm like, girl, you got audacity. You right. Like, this is my business. I'm telling you, you being nice. Exactly. I didn't have to. She, and that's what you're like. I'm grown. It's like, oh, you. <laughs> I couldn't believe she said that, but I, I expected that because in the back of my mind, I always felt like um, when she said Parker was her best friend and stuff, I don't think she's over Parker. I think that she knew they could have worked it out. Mm -hmm. And it's like he said, she was trying to punish him for working so much right? where she drove their marriage apart. Because that's what, you know, somebody had to pay the bills. Exactly. And, and she wanted him to be there. When, when when I left work and I get home, that's when I need you to be there. But he didn't have that kind of job where he could just... Right. Just pick up, pack and, up, clock out for the day and be home. Exactly. His, you know, and he was working too because they, you know, when they first started, they didn't have much but debt. And that was one thing he talked about. I was working on getting us out of debt. She wanted to go to law school, you know, and I went on to, you know, in my career. And I, I think that she forgot along the way. It's because, yeah. you know, I became a lawyer and now I can help. But he had done already created this routine where I had to provide for my family. Mm -hmm. And um, I was mad at Luna. I'm still mad at Luna um, about that. <laughs> I'm still mad at Luna because, and then I, I remember he said, as soon as they signed the divorce papers, she joined dating sites. Like she was right, like she ready was ready to get back out there. And I'm like, what? Well, I don't know. I, I was just, I was upset with Luna. I felt that that marriage could have been saved. I felt that she was the one that pushed them apart. Right. But I was happy to see him recover. And both of them with Madison. And Parker, it seemed like they were both what each other needed. She wanted the affection that she didn't get from her ex fiance, and he wanted the patience that he didn't get right. from, from Luna. So it's like them coming together. They both um, completed each other. Exactly. And I loved it. And the fact that she already loved his son mm -hmm. without even knowing, you know, what would happen. She already had a relationship with Angel, and that right. was, you know, the plus. But I did, I'm going to say, I wasn't disappointed. Uh, you know, you still look forward to the drug dealers. And you like, you know, you introducing the friends. And even with, with Erica, her husband, I'm like, oh, he finna start selling drugs. I had to get out of that. <laughs> you can, it, it's, it's, like, it's in us. It, it, it is in I us. I had to get out of that. Like, okay, you know, he has a regular, oh, he's a banker. Oh, okay. You know, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> She's a social worker. Okay, okay. He's in sales and she's a teacher. Okay, okay, okay. You know, you had to get out of that. But it it was fun. The stories were fun. And I know you have you're you're introducing the Brookwood and we have two more books after Welcome to Brookwood that you oh, read. Three Actually more. three. Yeah. Yeah. The third one hasn't been released yet. No, it releases next month on the fifteenth. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that. Because I I I don't know why I expected, but I I wasn't disappointed. I was satisfied because I can get into the romance. You know, there's some people mm. that just think that romance is just too like I I live there every day. I want to escape, and sometimes you know the the house moms and the stay at home moms and the single mom like we want that escape, and a lot of times urban right. is our escape. We want to be as close to that as possible but you know we live the straight and straight and arrow life right but it's like the, the your contemporary romance wasn't it wasn't corny 
it was it was actually it was actually kind of cute and then you Thank you me. put real life problems in it and i'm not you know trying to be funny but i wouldn't have when i'm thinking of a storyline about jacquel to, to you know for you to write about someone who two people who are divorced who couldn't stand each other during the divorce but then they came back friends to, for the sake of their child Right. That wouldn't have been a storyline I thought of, but it, it was creative, and I liked it. Were you influenced any kind of way about it? Or it was just like, you know what, these are what I want to write about, and this is what I'm going to do. I take bits and pieces of everything that, you know, is in my life and stuff like that. And I've had friends who have, you know, baby fathers who they cannot stand. Like, if that man was on fire, they not offer no, no water. <laughs> and um, mm -hmm. I've had... Friends who have, you know, baby fathers who they they realize their relationship didn't work, so they're good. Like raising their kids, they're fine. They're the best of friends. They're close. So I wanted it to be kind of like a merge of both. Like in the beginning, you know, um, Ren she couldn't stand her baby daddy. Like if he was on fire, she wasn't offering nothing. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you know, I wanted to add that in there along with the fact of like he was very inconsistent as a, a parent and he was inconsistent as a lover too but i also i didn't want it to, to be the same kind of story of when a new man is introduced he yeah. takes over the dad position the other the, the real dad gets pushed out like he never existed i wanted them to kind of have this whole you know blended family and i wanted i wanted dom to be the one to make that happen Okay. Okay. I like it. I, I, again, I, you know, I like your books. And then I, what I do notice that even though you have such an extensive catalog, your books are different. So it's like I could pick pick up this series or this standalone or this series and this standalone, and they're they're not the same. I think that's why your your readers say, "When are we going to get a spinoff of the standalone you did?" Because we're not going to read another standalone like it. Right. Heard it online, like you're not just going to change the name of the characters, and you know, it's different. And mm -hmm. I, I think that's what we've grown to expect from you. I, again, you you one of my one of my favorite authors. I. Thank when I recommend I books, I you know I love I love the way you write it. It flows. It, it's like you don't force anything. You sit and it it you know the way you write it it flows. You you have character flaws. You have you know character um, things that we like about the character, and it's like you merge them, and it creates the perfect character. Nobody is perfect. You don't write that perfect man. You don't write that perfect woman. You right there, they're beautifully flawed. Right. But then it's like you 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 don't steer away from their flaws. You this is what they are. This is the flaw they have. I'm not gonna steer away from it. I'm gonna talk about it. And that's what we that's what you usually do. And I, I love it. Um and then I like how you bring in like per real life issues. You know, things that right. rather you grew up in the suburbs or in the projects you can relate to it. everybody can relate yeah yeah and i like that but is, is there anything you're working on that we can look forward to i'm working on well wrapping up um an urban book it's been a minute but mm -hmm. i had um started this storyline a little bit the end of last year so and i had some, I think it was God telling me, like, girl, put this out. Because I was looking for another file to send to somebody, and that one popped up. And I ended up reading it, and I'm like, let me go and finish this. Mm. So I'm working. I can't release the title yet, but I will release the cover, I want to say, next week. You already yeah. have a cover for it? Yeah, I have a cover for it. Oh. So I will release it. Um, I'm planning on releasing it next week, the um, cover. And it will release the top of April. Oh, okay. So, that, oh, okay. That's soon. I got you. I got you. As far as your contemporary romance, are you going to continue writing in that? Yeah. I'm doing this urban book because it was something that I had started. And I was like, you know what? Let me go ahead. Let me break it up. And with my last series, the Linux Hill series, mm -hmm. it was like so heavy with real life stuff that I was like, you know what? 
let me just give them something, you know, let's, you know, take a breather. Let me give them something else to read, which was the Brookwood, Brookwood series. But then I was like, you know what? It's time for me to drop a little urban teaser in the middle there. And then I'm going to continue with contemporary. I have a sports romance series that's going to be dropping later oh, this summer. Oh, my God. What sport? Can I ask it's that? It's football. And I kind of mentioned it in um, one of the players is in the Brookwood series in the Lennox Hill series. I just mentioned uh -huh. them. So they're in there is their story. So if you didn't read the Brookwood or the Lennox Hill, you still can read it because they, they're just mentioned is like it don't get deep into, you know, they where you would miss anything if you just read their book because you didn't. No, read they it. have to read those series. Uh, listen. Trust me, read those series. And I, I know sometimes we don't want to discourage them. You know, we want them to not think they have to read all these books before. Right. It's like that. But they're the reason why I'm saying to read it because they're good, not because you have to. Right. Read I, I, I do encourage you to read it because it gives background. Because I mentioned the team, the football team that I'm going to be writing about a few times. But, you know, just read it just to read it so you'll know, like, oh, okay, that's where he came from. Yeah. Cuz I usually when I read when I'm reading, sometimes if I don't know that a book is a spin-off from another book and I read and then I go back and I read it out of order, I'm like, "Oh, so that makes sense why yeah, he Yeah, yeah. You know? So, I kind of like reading it in order, and I would recommend for you to go read it, go ahead and, you know, read it up. But, you know, that's next. I have a um the sports romance and I've touched on sports very little. But I'm excited for that one because awesome. that's my favorite genre. Yes. I, I, I love like reading sports romance. sports romance. Me too. And I like um, that you are creating your own little cities. Uh, again, readers, you know, I remember you mentioned Staten Island. And people like, I went there and I did. But these, the when you guys create the, the cities um, from scratch, I think that is so creative and I love it. And it's like you're you're actually comparing it to your city right. you know when i'm reading in brookwood i'm like how's this like miami you know um i i, I have fun with that but i do, i do like the creative series the creative cities as well um i like i like when authors do that so that's yeah I, I love creating a small town i'd be feeling like i i need to be living there but um when I first started writing, I used to just, you know, dabble between New York and Miami. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like those were the, the two like cities I would write about. Whether they lived in New York, they was they was for sure visiting Miami. <laughs> and I would throw in when I moved to Atlanta, I moved, I started putting in Atlanta. But I was like, you know, I want to do something different. I didn't want to make a small um, town in Atlanta or a small town in New York. So I chose Jersey for Lennox Hills and South Carolina for um, Brookwood. Yeah, I like it. I, I like that. Thank you. Um, so as far as the books, you have another one. You have the, the third installment for the Brook, um, Brookwood series coming up. And then you have a urban book coming right after that. Yep. I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait for you guys to read it. I'm looking forward to it. Well, that's it for our girls' night in. Is there anything you want to leave us with? Um, to my tribe, thank you so much for supporting me. Um, for any new readers that I may have ga may gain, you know, I hope you enjoy. I hope you love, you know, my work as much as I love creating it. And to the sister girls, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. <laughs> Anytime. Well, thank you for joining us and good night. Good night.